Awesome. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks for having me today. Um, thanks for inviting me. Um, for this presentation, I'm actually going to be more directional. Um, there's a lot of going to be a lot of presentations selling you things, technology, details, uh, designs, where things are going. I'm more going to approach it from a point of view where where markets are going, specifically markets where I feel are uh, extremely important for telcos slash service providers to grow their top line revenue. Agenda uh, or mental map is essentially three core buckets. One is a recap. I actually kind of gave a talk about five years ago, very similar topic. Um, I wanted to revisit that very quickly, just the baseline and calibrate folks. Uh, then what we're seeing, at least at F5, uh, just a little background, I was a, a part of Volterra, which was acquired of F5, which is now F5 Distributed Cloud, and we were a distributed cloud company that offered a SaaS-based distributed uh, services model for essentially um, security, connectivity, and application orchestration. And then, of course, how can telcos, uh, I call this round two, or a second attempt at growing your top line revenue relative to a recap of what I had discussed uh, five years ago. Okay, so recap. Um, you know, I quickly reviewed what I had presented uh, back in 2017, here to take some of the core messages that I was uh, observing and was articulating to the general crowd. It was really two core tenants. One was there was obviously a, fo a focus to reduce OPEX, uh, and more importantly, on top of that, is grow your top line revenue, right? Margins are obviously an important thing. Uh, but once you start getting margin compression in an industry where uh, you, know, you don't have a top line revenue growth, then things don't start to get pretty, right? You start to see the opposite of revenue growth. So one of the key messages from that presentation was one, grow top line revenue. Two, it's not just about um, packaging things together of existing services. It's more about building the operational discipline that cloud providers have. And it all comes down to how can you run large-scale cloud deployments, aka cloud native environments, aka telco cloud. Um, I had a more detailed thesis. I actually uh, it was a very long article posted uh, online. Uh, if you want, you can just go ahead and um, read it in more detail. It gives you a lot more input and data on how I came to those conclusions. Really, the, the conclusion was very simple. It was uh, you look at the, the way the markets are evolving. Cloud operators, aka CSPs and SPs, were going to clash. Uh, and ultimately, there was either going to be a, a, a mechanism where the, they come together and partner, or cloud providers will just start to keep growing and outpacing telcos relative to revenue and margins, and here we are. So this is a, a quick recap. I don't have the updated slides. Uh, long story short, last five years, you can see share growth has grown quite a bit. That's not the x-axis. That's actually some of the telcos that I decided to pick on. Um, there was a revenue slide I don't have, but revenue essentially tripled for this comparison. And for the next comparison, revenue almost doubled here as well um, for the CSP versus the, compared to the telco. So, okay, so that was a recap of essentially what's happened in the last five years. Uh, so let's kind of look at what ha what's happening in the enterprise market, enterprise architectures, and really how can service providers as a channel to selling to the existing enterprises, because ultimately connectivity is connectivity, that's not going away, but how can you up-level that? So before we do that, the first thing we have to focus on is there is a fundamental shift in how apps are being designed and deployed, right? There's three core tenants. Uh, I think we all can kind of agree that monolithic apps have transitioned to both uh, or not just monolithic, monolithic apps, you have VMs, you have containers, and now even things like serverless. Uh, and it's not, it's not binary, it's not one or all, it's actually being able to operate all three of them in an, in an environment where you both have connectivity, security, and observability. You now have many locations. People call it many different things. They call it edge, network edge, far edge, doesn't matter. There's a compute need to process data and do something with that data, and that's all going to be driven based on connectivity, cost, uh, and the applications. And we're seeing that across the board. More recently, a lot, there's a, a, an immediate need to actually have some of this data processed directly on-prem for like manufacturing, smart retail use cases. And then, of course, like what I like to call it is the commoditization of IP. Uh, that's just a, that's a, that's a function of the industry doing real well and being successful. Uh, the reality is I, uh, APIs are the new IP. Uh, API gateways are your new routers. Uh, API security are your new firewalls, right? So in a lot of ways, you know, people who start developing applications, delivering applications, the world to them is all APIs. A uh, IPs are just really just almost abstracted for most developers. So what does this mean uh, from an application delivery point of view? 
Uh, so, you know, I think pretty standard stuff. Think the world started with CDN, static content offered and delivered out of uh, data centers. You, think, you had things like hybrid cloud where you typically want to connect one data center with maybe one cloud. Then there was this whole multi-cloud notion uh, where maybe you had different best of breed clouds for different services. You wanted to connect those. But really what we're seeing now is, well, the applications themselves, depending on the apps and data, actually have to be really distributed depending on the need. Um, so what does that mean from an enterprise point of view? Well, the technical challenges of delivering the apps are like four key tenants, right? Is you have complex coordination across many personas. So if you look at like the app dev team and DevOps team, they always blame the network. Network's broken. But when you talk to the network team, they always blame the application developers. The reality is each persona for every line of business has a specific need. Uh, and more importantly, the friction with we working across those teams is actually quite a lot. So, and when you start to compound that with a growing architecture and boundary horizontally, things just become much more complicated across the entire personas. Automation becomes even more challenging across different public cloud environments, on-prem, and now edge, like think, think on-prem. Then you got security difficulties. You have this whole um, distributed uh, compute and connectivity elements that now need to also, in addition to have network security, you need to think application security as well, API security, and in some cases, fraud and bot. And then again, these are siloed environments, right? So from an operator point of view, it's almost near impossible to suck in all this different data from different environments, correlate that data. I mean, there's obviously mechanisms and techniques. Uh, ideally, you want all this data to be in a single place where you can not only provide uh, centralized observability and monitoring, but some, a mechanism that allows uh, operators to react. So what does that mean? Distributed cloud services for modern apps. Uh, architecturally, if you assume enterprises are going there, and it is more than an assumption, Gartner has defined that category. A lot of enterprises have actually shown interest. We've actually seen a lot of interest in that as well as a company. Um, you know, it, the goal there is how do you solve the collaboration problem? Simple, provide a self-serve mechanism, aka a SaaS. I mean, the world is SaaS at this point. So allow all these different personas to self-serve their needs, everything from a DevOps developer from a deploying an app, or specific policy from a NetOps personnel to bringing up the infrastructure and creating a network firewall. Uh, automation, everything's cloud native from the top down. If your interface is literally a SaaS environment, you can automate the hell out of it. Terraform, APIs, you, know, you can put in your pipelines, GitOps, things become that much more simpler. Advanced security, you have a full layer three through layer seven stack with API security, and more importantly, being able to offer those services in any environment, public cloud, on-prem, or even your data centers. And then full stack observability. If you're in the full, full path data plane, you actually can observe all the data, therefore correlate all the data and provide much more meaningful insight and analysis to both your SecOps teams and even things like auditors and audit logs and trails. Okay, so what does that mean for service providers uh, in terms of market opportunities? Um, again, the focus or the thesis here was how do I, how do I grow top line revenue as, a, as an industry? There are really three main use cases or buckets that we're having a tremendous amount of conversations with customers about. <clears throat> First one is networking, your, you know, your bread and butter. Um, hybrid and multi-cloud. Um, one of the first use cases, or one use case we're seeing is multi-cloud transit. What does that mean? If you look at uh, constructs like uh, AWS uh, Transit Gateway, as an example, that's just a glorified hub and spoke, is what the kids today call it uh, Transit Gateway. We call it hub and spoke, L3 VPNs. Reality is it solves a problem for how they connect their VPCs with other VPCs, think of that as actually a natural extension to how you offer your managed CPE services to some of your uh, enterprises today. You extend the, that managed service not only from on-prem, but even in the cloud. We're actually seeing a tremendous amount of success in that model with some service providers, uh, actually pretty much everywhere, EMEA, APAC, and the US. Uh, Multi-cloud load balancing, fancy way of saying I have uh, origin servers in multiple clouds. I need to expose that on some network infrastructure or an edge with a set of security services, which we offer, uh, or we partner with them, them being the service providers. And then of course, multi-cluster app mash. I think this is, this is more of a thought process that really needs to be baked in with service providers. Um, the best way I try to draw an analogy for networking oriented individuals is think of, think of multi-cluster uh, multi app mash as layer seven VPN. You're essentially being able to connect um, two services without actually connecting the network. The biggest problem with uh, applications today that are highly distributed. The moment I need to connect uh, you know, origin server to client here, 
you connect the networks, you have this immediate problem of I have overlapping IP space, how do I secure the network? It's a nightmare, right? If anything, most of my conversations start with, hey, what if I gave you two proxies here that are essentially managed and I can expose origin one to client one, never connect the networks. Uh, and that conversation actually becomes very interesting. This, I think, is probably the end goal of the industry. As, again, if you remember the beginning slide where I said the world is going to API, if you can connect the APIs without actually connecting or exposing the networks, there's a tremendous amount of operational simplicity there and also observability and security. So that's one bucket. The other bucket is overall security. Of course, you have your standard networking, uh, network firewalls, WAFs, and all that. But as applications terminate at the API, aka a proxy, you actually get, you need API security, but you also get API visibility, application visibility. This is very powerful. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to sell you things. We have a booth for that and other presentations. But if you want to see demos, what you can actually see is how we all do automatic discovery of APIs. Even a 5G core will discover all the APIs that are flowing in the system. We'll suggest, uh, you know, certain swagger rules, for example, to uh, whitelist or positive enforce certain security elements. The other one is application delivery. Uh, think of that as a natural evolution to CDN, where you actually have runtimes on the edge, not full runtimes. We have a full full uh, container runtime. Um, but you also want things like serverless or function as a service. Um, essentially, it's the, the evolution from static content to dynamic content being served out at the edge. So these are kind of the three main tenets uh, of use cases. In terms of value for DevOps, SecOps, NetOps, value is the same across all four. It's a really a simpler, more agile operation model, end-to-end -end visibility. Uh, you have a, a more effective distributed applications for multi-cloud. Uh, and then ultimately lower TCO and SaaS model, not only for the enterprises, but more importantly for the, the network operators or service providers, which give you better margins. Okay, so what does that mean? This is the last slide in terms of opportunities for telcos. Um, you know, I kind of grouped it into three buckets. One of them is telco MSP, managed service provider, where we have actually a couple of successful uh, Examples where we've partnered with some service providers and white labeled a distributed cloud model where they will sell through as a channel to their enterprises, branded completely as the telco, offering things like multi cloud networking, edge as a service, smart buildings for some of the edge AI use cases. But more importantly, they have a fully integrated SaaS model where they have a full uh, security stack on prem. Telco cloud, that's what this, uh, well, this track's all about, um, you know, in terms of streamlining and making it operationally uh, more simplified for the operators. We have a couple of uh, uh, customers where we're actually starting to put our 5G core infrastructure. They're starting to discuss and ev uh, evaluate their ability to expose those applications on-prem, aka private 5G or even some mech use cases. And then I think the obvious one, which is actually already happening, is what I call the telco CSP landlord. At the end of the day, you own the real estate. Uh, Pavan was mentioning there's already all this deep integration of connectivity happening uh, across both all the CSPs and um, the telcos. So a good example is, uh, you know, these are public partnerships for at and Microsoft or Verizon and Amazon, where they're, they're providing deep connectivity in their networks. And as a result, you know, just standard uh, hosting is essentially what you're doing, right? So I think that one should be obvious, but um, it's important because the, uh, you have to think about the moment you start doing all this deep integration with these, service, these CSPs, you can actually start to tap into a new revenue stream, which potentially allows you to evaluate other options to grow top line revenue direct to the enterprise. So that's all I had. If you want more, go check out our booth uh, and or scan the QR code and get more information. So I'll open it up to Q&A.